So when you think you've had enough fun with electron configurations, we've got one more shorthand. So we've learned how to do uh, orbital notation or orbital filling diagrams, which are the ones with the arrows showing the direction of the electron spins and everything. Then we've got regular electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2s, 2p6, the whole long configuration. And then we did condensed electron configurations or noble gas notation using the noble gas as the core of the electron configuration and just showing what comes after that noble gas. There's one last thing that I need to show you. It's called Lewis dot diagrams. And what we do is we just use dots to represent just the valence electrons of the atom. So we're not looking at all of the 1s2, 2s. We're just looking at the valence electrons. So think about how many would be the maximum number of valence electrons you could have. What we do is we write the symbol of the element in the middle, and then we draw dots to represent only the valence electrons. So the first thing you have to do is figure out how many valence electrons something has. One side we're going to use to represent the s orbital, and then the other three sides are used for the p orbitals. And we have to use Hund's rule. Remember the order for placing the electrons into the p orbitals. So I'll show you how that works. Hund's rule is that empty bus seat rule. You have to put an electron in each of the empty sides before you put a second electron there. So let's look at an example. And we're going to look at nitrogen. So first, pause and look at the periodic table to figure out how many valence electrons nitrogen has. Hopefully you see that it has five valence electrons. And so let's just do the regular electron configuration for nitrogen. Remember that it ends in 2p, so we're going to start. It's going to have 1s. 1s has two electrons. 2s, excuse my writing, I've got a, a pen issue with my Moby. 2s also has two electrons. And then 2p, if you look, it, nitrogen is in 2p, it's in the third column. So we have a total of seven electrons, but remember these 1s electrons, because they don't have the highest coefficient, these are our core electrons, and these are our valence. Okay, and remember we can tell the valence electrons just by looking at the columns. So they're in group 15 or uh, column 15, and so they have five valence electrons. So we're going to write the symbol in the center. And then I want you to think about nitrogen as having this kind of little imaginary box around it with four sides. And it doesn't matter which side you start on to put your dots on. I tend to favor the right. That's just me. But you can start top, bottom, left, right. And you want to think of one side, whichever one you start on, as the s orbital. And then these other three sides Those are your p orbitals. I know that's a bad looking p. So when you start doing your dots, what you want to do is just write your symbol. OK, I know that I have five valence electrons. The first two electrons, if there's only one, it's always going to go in the s subshell. But it, the first two are always going to go in the s subshell. And then we have three more. Remember Hund's rule. Think of about the orbital filling diagram. You would put one in the first p orbital, one in the second p orbital, and one in the third. So you don't actually have to do the orbital filling diagram to do this. Just think about the order that you put those electrons in. So the order is always going to be one, two, three, four, five, and then if you had more electrons, six, seven, or eight, you would put, start again in that orbital, the one that had the first electron, that would be the next one, then the next one here, then the next one here. Let's look at a few examples. So again, your first step 
is to look and see which, uh, how many valence electrons each of these has. So if you look at potassium, it's in group one, so it has one valence electron. So we're going to write the symbol for potassium and just put one dot. And you could have put your dot top, bottom, left, right. It doesn't matter where you put it. I just tend to put mine on the right. All right, so go ahead and see how many valence electrons calcium has. Pause. So calcium has two. It's in group two. And so calcium We're going to put two valence electrons. Let's put these two on the top. I will know whether or not you did it correctly. Don't worry about where you start. All right, chromium. Go ahead and look to see where it is. Think about how many valence electrons it has. Okay, so you should see that chromium is a transition metal. Remember that all of the transition metals in the F blocks have two. Don't be fooled. It's in that little center section. So chromium symbol for chromium is CR, and then the dots, I'm just putting those on the right. All right, pause and look for gallium. Gallium has three, so we're going to put the symbol for gallium, which is GA. Okay, so remember the first two go together and then the next one goes on the next side. It doesn't matter if you put that on the top or the bottom, just make sure that you have two together and one separate. All right, let's try another one. All right, so looking at that, you want to see what the number of valence electrons are for each of those. All right, for germanium, Germanium has three, I'm sorry, four valence electrons. Okay, so look to see how many valence electrons germanium has. You should see that it has four. Okay, so remember that the first two valence electrons go together. One, two. And then we fill the, these are our little P subshells, these other three sides. So one, two. So you should have two together and two by themselves. Check on arsenic, pause. Okay, arsenic has five. You probably have a little trouble finding arsenic. It's AS, not AR. So with that, it's going to be similar to nitrogen. So the first two go together. And then the other three by themselves on the different sides. Now the next one is selenium. And you can see that that has six valence electrons. The symbol for selenium is SE. And so the first two electrons go together on one side. One, two, then three four, five, and then the sixth one doubles up with the other one. That's Hun's rule, that empty bus seat rule that you would sit in an empty bus seat before you would sit one with somebody else in it. Okay, now we have bromine. Go ahead and pause and look for bromine. Bromine has seven valence electrons. <laughs> All right, so in this case, the first two go together. Number three goes here. Number four on the next side. Number five on the next side. Six back here. Seven here. So you should have three pairs and one single. And then for krypton, there are eight. Krypton's one of the noble gases, and that one's nice and easy because it's going to have two in the S, and then the P orbitals have six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. 
So two on each side of anything with a noble gas. That's the last thing we're going to do with electron configurations for now. If you have questions, we'll go over some uh, practice in class. Let me know if you need help.